Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm Jay Nicholas. We're going to do another in our series of saltwater fly tying and fly fishing videos. Hey, welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. No nonsense, no nonsense series of saltwater fly tying videos. Boy, we, we're having us some fun here. Um, we're going to use some traditional materials. This is called a rock fish candy fly. It is directly inspired by uh, the whole slug of surf candy flies that I have learned about on YouTube. I'm a relative newcomer to the saltwater game, I admit it, but I'm having fun basically devoted the last year to saltwater fly fishing here in Oregon. Tying flies. Boy, that was it's quite a it's been quite a journey. Just because you've tied regular old trout flies and steelhead flies and stuff like that for fifty years doesn't mean you're gonna be particularly prepared to tie saltwater flies. But lots of practice at the bench, lots of inspiration, and a lot of time out on the water. Seeing how these things fish, how they cast, how they swim, how the fish respond to them, how they hold up after being eaten and eaten and eaten and eaten. So surf candy's got a long tradition on the East Coast. I don't think I saw anybody tie them with bucktail. So why not tie it with bucktail? I'm using bucktail. And this is going to be an unweighted fly. And I've fished this fly for rockfish and done really, really well when the fish are up in the top few feet of the water column. You fish a dry line, fish a intermediate line, and um, they're they're feeding on little little bait fish. I don't know what kind they are. Little little swimming bait fish. I'm a fish biologist, but I know about salmon in rivers and their life cycle and things like that. But anyway, I thought, why not? tie a surf candy like fly but I wanted a tailing material that's nice and stiff would hold its shape really well so what they will do with some of the synthetics they use that would curl and would foul is they epoxy them past the bend of the hook and that's great. With bucktail you don't need to. And I, I say epoxy, you know, those that's old school. Now we have our clear cure goo. You see this is a slim profile fly. It's really fun. Um, and guess what? You're fishing Chinook in the estuaries. I haven't caught silver on this particular fly, but I know I'm gonna, if, if I'm given enough opportunities to be out there, I'm gonna Elk River Estuary would be a great place to fish this fly. Out anywhere in the ocean, in Puget Sound, you name it. It's a fun fly to tie. I, I try to avoid using the, the phrase, it's a really easy fly to tie. Because I've heard that phrase, I've, I've seen that phrase be used. And then I've watched along and tried to tie the fly myself and had difficulty and struggled. And I've kind of had that especially happened when I went from the trout world to the saltwater world. 
kind of decided that what is easy or what is challenging is a matter of time and experience and your reference points. And rather than saying that a phi is easy to tie, you can say, well, it doesn't involve very many materials, or it uses basic. Now what I'm doing here, this is the Cure Goo. I'm using Tack Free. Uh, some people use the thick. Now you'll, you'll see the Tack Free does run. And so I'm probably going to wind up doing several layers. And I'm going to try to get a little bit of rotation going here. Now, I, I, I might even, if I wasn't shooting this video, I would probably be tilting my vise in different directions, different angles. To just fuzz. I'll see what happens. See, yep, you see it's starting to go down there? So I could tilt my fly down, but I'm not going to. Why? Well, because I probably lose my focus. So I'm just going to spin it around here and make the best of this. And now I'm going to hit it. Hope you're being patient with me because I could have hit it with the light some time ago. But for those of you who are a little bit new, have I got any thick handy here in this tack green? Let's Let's see if my thick, my bottle of thick will run right now. Ah, look at that. First try. So I'll put some thick on here. If you've spent much time looking at pelagic bait fish, they're often translucent, transparent. Pretty cool looking little critters, little baby fishies that get eaten by bigger fishies. So we can see this surf candy style. And I think it was a gentleman named Bob Popovic. Bob, forgive me if I got that wrong, or I don't think it was Lefty. I don't think it was Bob Clauser. It was one of the, there. There are several gentlemen that have been extremely influential in shaping the fly tying world, the world of the saltwater fly, and and these are gentlemen that have spent years of their lives. Now I think I'm going to go back to my thin. I think I got a little area here with no goo on it. On the side. But it's not coming out. So I've got to go back to my tack free. I just need to clear that nozzle. Which I will do in between flies here. Anyway, these these fellas, we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Now this is a really nice fly. Rockfish candy. Check it out. Throw that out there. Cast and strip. Up in the surface layers. Um, you, you run it on your head fast sinker and uh, strip it back up to the surface. It works too, but boy, when they're on the surface, this is an awesome fly. Have fun with it.